With fundraising, it's really easy for us to, to, to figure out like the return on ad spend, uh, and that becomes kind of the common KPI that, that we're training our campaigns on. We're trying to get them not to care about the click-through rate or the views, or it's, it's like, is, is this driving donations? And that's easy for us to, uh, to communicate. It's harder with persuasion and branding for the campaign to do that, but we, uh, we were, I was talking earlier uh, with, uh, with Jesse from Facebook about this. One of the things we did with Bernie is we, we did a lot of testing to try to, to ensure that like the creative we were running uh, was achieving our branding goals, and that was an important part. So we tried to look past what the view-through rate was, what the video completion rate was, what the click-through rate was, and it was more about like, is this actually changing people's perception of Bernie Sanders and changing their intent to vote? So in terms of a platform that we wouldn't have considered a couple years ago, Snapchat was something that surprised us. Uh, they're still new in terms of the metrics that we can track. Uh, it's challenging to, to prove the performance of the ads, but it really took off for Bernie. There were a lot of people who wanted to use these sponsored filters that we were running, and that, that surprised me. Uh, it made sense later, later on when we realized that like, Millennials really like Bernie, and then anybody under 34 was a big fan of his. So of course, like the platform that like a lot of people under 34 are using, he was really popular on. Um, but two years ago, if you had told me that we were going to manage Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign and Snapchat was going to be a, a large part uh, of our advertising, I would have told you you're crazy. Programmatic was something that created a gold rush in politics. Everybody rushed into the fact that they could do voter-targeted advertising. Um, I feel like. There has been a little bit of a deacceleration in the political space because uh, everyone in politics didn't realize how, how much fraud is possible in, in programmatic. Uh, and when it comes to video in particular, it's really challenging for an agency or a small political campaign to access premium video in inventory programmatically. Um, I think that we're getting to a place where uh, it's starting, the industry is starting to shake out like the, the bad players and we're starting to you know, better track metrics that we need to, to, to prove this can work. I, there's still a really bright future in programmatic, but it's, uh, I, heard, I heard yesterday, I think one of the, the, the talks talking about like programmatic shouldn't be just a way to, to uh, lower the cost of your media campaign. Like if, if the, the whole point, it, it, like political campaigns trying to do programmatic advertising just because they want to pay a lower CPM, it's not the, the right fit for them. But if it's trying to, to reach the voters they care about with premium inventory, that's what they should do. And they're gonna to have to pay a higher premium because if you're bidding on all these impressions and you only wanna target a thousand people, like you're gonna to have to bid very high to reach those thousand people with quality inventory.